Hi, kids. How you doing? This is a, a reading by Paul Bedard of Alice in Wonderland. I hope you enjoy it. So I have to get to the first page. I have to get to the first page. I have to get to the first page. This is called Chapter One, Down the Rabbit Hole. Alice was beginning to get very tired of seeing me by her sister on the bank and of having nothing to do. Once or twice she had peeped into the book her sister was reading, but it had no pictures or conversation in it. And what is the use of this book? I thought that was with, without pictures or conversations. And she was considering in her own mind as well as she could, for the hot day made her feel very sleepy and stupid. Oh, she didn't feel stupid when she felt sleepy. Oh. And she woke up. What is the pleasure of... What is the pleasure and to... Say, hold on. Whether the pleasure of making a daisy chain would be worthy of the trouble of getting up and picking the daisies, would suddenly a red white rabbit with pink eyes run close to her. <laughs> there was nothing so very remarkable in that, nor did Alice think it was so very much out of the way to hear the rabbit say to itself, Oh dear, oh dear, I shall be late. Oh, when she thought it was... Over afterwards, it occurred to her that she ought to have wondered at this, but at the time, it all seemed so quite natural. Hmm. Hmm. But when the rabbit actually took a watch out of its waistcoat pocket and looked at it, and there hurried on, Alice set it to her feet, started, for it flashed across her mind that she had never before seen a rabbit with either a waistcoat pocket or a watch to take out of it. And burning with curiosity, she ran across the field after it. Unfortunately, it was just the time to see it pop down a large rabbit hole under the hedge. <laughs> yes, and in another moment, John went Alice after it, never once considering how in the world she was going to get out again. The rabbit hole went straight on like a tunnel for some way, and then dipped suddenly down, so suddenly that Alice had not a violent moment to think about stopping herself before she found herself falling down a very deep hole. Oh, no, everything will be all right. And either the well was very deep or she fell very suddenly, for she had plenty of time as she went down to look around her and to wonder what was going to happen next. First she tried to look down and make out where she was coming to, and then it was very dark to see anything. <laughs> and then make out, look at the, at the sides of the well, and notice that they were filled with cupboards and, uh, and bookshelves. Here and there she saw maps and pictures, pictures hung upon pegs. She looked, took down a jaw from the, one of the shelves as she passed. It was labeled orange marmalade. <laughs> But to her great disappointment, it was empty. She did not like to trap the jar for fear of throwing someone underneath, so managed to put it in one of the cupboards as she fell past it. And, uh, well, thought Alice to herself, after such a fall as this, I shall think of nothing of tumbling downstairs. How brave they all think me at home. Why, I shouldn't say anything about it, even if I fell off the top of the house. No, she won't well, which is very likely. No, it's not. No, down, 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 she falls, never to come up again. Oh, I wonder how many miles I've fallen by this time, she said aloud. It must be getting somewhere near the center of the earth. The center of the earth. <laughs> Let me see what would be 4,000 miles, I think. For you see, Alice had learnt several things of this sort in her lessons in the schoolroom, and though this was not a very good opportunity for showing off her knowledge, as there was one, no one to listen to her, oh, and still it was good in practice to say it over. Yes, that's about the right distance, but would I wonder what latitude or longitude I have got to? Alice had no idea what latitude was, <laughs> what longitude was, but though there were nice grand words to say, hmm, <laughs> yes. Presently she began again, 
I wonder if I shall fall through the earth. <clears throat> yeah. oh, oh. How funny it would seem to come out among the people that walk with their heads downward. The antipathies, I think, she would, uh, she would was rather glad there. Was no one listening this time? As it didn't sound as the right word. But I shall have to ask them what name of the country is. You know, you know. Please, ma'am, is this New Zealand or Australia? And she tried to curtsy as she spoke, fiercely curtsying. Oh, curtsy, and as you're falling through the air, do you think you could manage it? And what is it in ignorance? I'm not ignorant. No, she was not. Uh, she was thinking me for asking. No, I never to ask. I never do to ask. Perhaps I shall see it written up somewhere. And down, down, down. There was nothing else to do. So Alice began to um, get back to land again. Back to land. And, I was, and that's all the first figure, said the mock turtle, suddenly stopping his voice. And the two creatures who had been jumping, jumping, jumping about like uh, bad things all the time. <laughs> yes, yes, bad. Uh, they were jumping and they had sat down again very sadly and quietly and looked at Alice. <laughs> yes. It's much the be to very pretty dance, said Alice timidly. Would you like to see a little of it, said the mock turtle. Very much indeed, said Alice. Mm -hmm. Yes, come and let's try a first figure, said the mock turtle to the gryphon. Uh, yes, we can do without lobsters, you know. We shall sing. Oh, you sing, said the gryphon. I forgot the words. Mm -hmm. I forgot the words. So they began mon solemnly dancing round and round Alice, every now and then treading on her toes while she passed to Chris, oh, waving their forepaws to mark the time, while the mock turtle sang this there very slowly and sadly. Will you walk a little faster, said the witty to the snail. There's a porpoise close to us, and he's treading at a tail. See how eagerly, eagerly the lobsters and the turtles all advance. They are waiting on a shingle. Will you come and join the dance? Will you, won't you, will you? Won't you, will you, will you? Join the dance. Will you, won't you, will you? Won't you, will you, will you? Join the dance, dance, dance. We can really, you can not really have no notion how delightful it would be when they take us up and throw us and with the lobsters out to the sea. And, uh, but the snail replied, too far, too far, and gave a lark a scance, and then said, he thanked the, the witting kindly. But he could not join the dance, would not, could not, would not, could not, would not join the dance. Would not, could not, would not, could not, would not join the dance. Mm -hmm. What matters it how far we go, his scaly friend replied. There is another shore, you know, upon the other side. The further off from England, the nearer is to France. Then turn not pale and love stale, but come and join the dance. Will you, won't you, will you, won't you, will you <laughs> join the dance? Will you, won't you, will you, will you join the dance? <laughs> And I hope all you kids are enjoying yourselves in this tale of Alice in Wonderland. Thank you. It's very interesting, Jets, to watch, said Alice, very, feeling very glad that it was over at mass. And I do so like that curious song about the witting. Hmm. Oh, as to the witting, said the mock turtle, they you seem to see them, of course. Yes, Alice said. I've often seen them at dinner. She checked herself hastily. Hmm. I don't know where Din may be, said the mock turtle, but if you're seeing them so often, of course you know what they're like. I believe so, Alice replied. Yes, I see them. They have tails in their mouths, and they were all over the crumbs. Oh, oh yes, it's true. You you know, I tell, and hold, and here we go, when we return with fun. Two little kids and happy children, and we read all of Alice in Wonderland. And I have my sombrero. Yes, yes, I will be back soon.